Hello and welcome back to Kim's Cozy Corner. Today, we are gonna check in on our 23-year-old pepper seeds. So according to our garden journal, we started our peppers, let's see, we started our peppers on February 17th and it is now March 9th and we're going to check in and see what has germinated thus far and guess what, we're going to need to up pot some of those while we're here. Now I planted 35 different varieties of peppers and we are going to look at how each and every one of those have been doing over the last few weeks. If this tells you anything, you can tell we are in good shape. Of the different peppers, I planted a variety of things from um, sweet peppers to mild peppers to what I call hot peppers. And the seeds are ranging anywhere from seeds that I literally just purchased a few weeks ago and going all the way back to 2001 from a packaging standpoint. And so there's a little bit of everything here, but we're going to talk through and see how the peppers are doing. You're going to be really surprised on how well the peppers have done. Of all of the different peppers I have here, and there are 35 different peppers, I had germination of 34 peppers. I only have one cell that didn't germinate and it's my habanero chocolate peppers. The cell didn't germinate at all, but I got at least one pepper in every other cell. So I call that a win for the year. Some of the peppers did so well. I'm a little embarrassed because I planted so many in the cell and I didn't need to. So let's start with the seeds that are from 2014 to kind of give you an example. So these are my yummy peppers. We harvested these seeds from our garden back in, well, my neighbor did, from his garden back in 2014. So the seeds were 10 years old. I planted them last year. They did really well last year and I probably planted 20 seeds in each cell. I knew I was going to up pot so it wasn't a big deal, but I didn't expect every seed to germinate. Every seed I believe germinated in this cell for all of my yummies. So for the yummies, we're in good shape for the garage cell that we're, where we're going to have a plant cell. We're in really good shape on yummies. So 10 year old seeds did well. These seeds were from my garden though, or from my neighbor's garden. So they are, um, I guess you would say bread for this area, if you want to say that, but from the garden, we harvested these seeds. 10 years later, we're still getting peppers. What's my next oldest seed? I have a 2017, no, that's not right. Oh, yes it is. I do have a California Wonder from 2017. And at first I thought it didn't germinate, but it did. It did. It came in at the last minute and I got a couple of seeds right here. So that's a win. I think I only planted maybe four or five seeds. I have one that has germinated and another is on the way. So everything did really well. I am so excited. And now let's talk about those 20 three year old seeds. So the seed pack said it was packaged in 2001. My neighbor, for whatever reason, cause I got the seeds from my neighbor, had hand wrote 2004 on there. So they're at least 24 or they're at least 20 year old seeds. And I said I was gonna plant them all, but there were so many seeds, I didn't plant them all, but I did plant a good 10 or 15 or so. And those seeds were Ancho 101. So these are Ancho 101 right here. Let me pull the tag out just so you can see. Look at that germination. Look, 20 year old seeds germinated. 
And I didn't do anything special as far as um, taking care of my seeds other than keeping them in a cool, dark place. That's it. I didn't put them in any special medium or anything like that. But 20 year old seeds germinated and they look good. They look healthy. And we're going to have those in the garden this year. So I just wanted to kind of give you a quick update on how they're doing. My overall favorite pepper, which I talk about all the time, is the Thunderbolt. And the Thunderbolt can get very long. That particular type of pepper is a horn-shaped pepper. It can get upwards of a, of a foot long. Um, and the seeds for the Thunderbolt, ooh, they're growing so fast. They have true leaves. Everything's looking good on those. So now you say, what's the next step, Kim? What do we do? We started all of these seeds. Now, what do we do with them? Well, if you did like me and you planted 100 seeds in every cell, we're going to have to do some up potting of those particular plants. And that's what we're going to do here next today. You want to up pot your plants once you have true leaves. So let's take a look at this cell here. You see that little bitty pepper plant right there? There's only two leaves on that little tiny pepper plant right there. If you can even see it, there's two leaves on it. Now that one's not ready to be up pot. Those are not true leaves. The next set of leaves that come on that particular plant will be true leaves. Here's another one. So this one doesn't even have the right color yet. There's only two uh, leaves coming up on that plant. But then if you look at this one beside it, the first two leaves are there. And now there's a set of leaves coming up the center of that particular plant. So that plant can be up potted into a, a cell of its own. And so that's how you know when it's time to up pot if you need to do up potting. And so that's what I'm going to do here today. Not on all of these, not on all of them, but for the ones that are definitely overcrowded, like the yummies here with 500 seeds in each cell, we're going to do some up potting of those. And I just want to show you that up potting process. So we're going to start with those yummies, like I was telling you. And I have three different colors of yummies. I have orange, yellow, and red. And there's 500 in each cell. Every bit 20 for real in the orange cell. Um, the red didn't germinate as well as the orange and the yellow, but lots and lots in there. And so I've already prepared two different types of cells to up pot those in. The original cell is tiny. And if I had one pepper in there, it'll probably be fine until I'm ready to transplant it out into the garden. But since I have 500 in there, we're gonna need to separate those out and up pot those into a larger cell. So we will start with the orange yummies. Now, the one thing that I do with my peppers you can do it. You don't have to do it. You can put one pepper per cell, but I am limited on space. And so what I typically do is put two peppers in each one of my cells. I kind of separated them. I separate them out. And then when I get ready to put them out in the garden, I will separate them into individual peppers. But I'm going to put two in each of these cells. Now, this is the orange yummies all 500 of them here. And this is an orange yummy. So I have two peppers. They have true leaves on them. I just want to make sure you can see me. I'm digging a hole and I am going to put them back roughly to the same depth it was already growing. That's my goal anyway. So I'm just using this tool. I use a Jiffy seed starting mix and I, now that they have emerged, they have true leaves, then I would be putting a very small amount of liquid fertilizer when I water. If not every time, it'll be every other time. But you need to follow the directions of your fertilizer or you will burn your plants up. And, and they take so little liquid fertilizer. 
Now, if you don't want to do liquid fertilizer and you prefer to add a granular fertilizer or compost, worm castings, there's so many different options to get your um, to get fertilizer to your plants. So you can use whichever one would work best for you. If you have plenty of room, just plant your peppers such that you have plenty of space and you don't have to do this up potting process that I'm doing. And I will probably be up potting peppers for the next couple of weeks because I'm gonna have to move some stuff around, bring some stuff in, take some stuff out. <laughs> Just to find room for the peppers. So that's the process. And I'm gonna keep doing this for at least my yummy peppers. And um, we'll just start working our way through this. And I will bring you back when I've decided where I'm gonna stop because we're not gonna get these all done today. But let me take care of a few of these and I'll be right back. I'm doubling them up just to get room. All right, this is where we're gonna call the up potting for our peppers. We got a few of them done. There's um, the yummies and a few other ones in here that we got up potted, but that's all I wanna do today because I wanna spend the rest of the time with you giving you an indoor garden update. So let me put these away and then let me show you how things are doing in the indoor growing space. Now, it's been a minute since I've given you an update for the indoor growth space, so let's look around holistically at how things are doing, and we won't forget the hydroponics either, so we will be going upstairs as well. So let's first start with all of the seedlings. My onion have received a haircut. It's the first haircut of the year. And we are almost a month from getting these outdoors. The new onion that I bought, the last onions have all germinated and they're looking good. I also have down here some of my Brussels sprouts. Some are germinated, this pocket hasn't, but this one's trying, so I think they're doing really well. Back here, I have some herbs and some lettuce that I up potted um, because they were getting too big for the cell that they were in. And so the lettuce is looking really good. We've already talked about the peppers. Next to the peppers are the flowers that I started and they are starting to germinate. There's a little bit of green on there already. And so they are looking good. Some of these weren't on a heat mat, so they're not looking as good as the others, but they're still trying and they're coming along. But these are all the flowers here. In another week or so, they should all be really, really looking good, but still way too early to up pot. I'm probably maybe three weeks out from being able to up pot those into individual containers, but I could be wrong because the environment of my indoor grow tent is very different this year than past years because there are more grow lights in here and uh, more plants and more, just more of everything, just more of everything. <laughs> Let's go up to the next level and see how it's doing. In the back here, I have some more lettuce that I started. It's not time to up pot those yet, but they're looking good. They're getting some color on the leaves right there. There's some kale back there and some parsley. My oregano has already broken ground way back here. There's oregano, little bitty baby ones. These are the peppers we just up potted. And I'm keeping the lights pretty close because that's, these are uh, shop lights. They're not powerful grow lights. So I'm keeping the light as close as possible to those. Over here, mustard and more lettuce that I went ahead and up potted here. And in the back, there are collards back there. They've already broken ground. We don't have true leaves yet, but they did break ground. 
up here in the very top. These are the tomatoes that I just started a, a video or so ago. And um, I actually started them the very next day. So nothing's broken ground yet. And here's the other container of tomatoes. All 60 different varieties of tomatoes are down here. Now, I don't expect it to take much more than a week for them to start popping their little heads up and coming to the party. So in the next video or so, I'm sure you'll get to see that they're doing really well. Down here is my old pot of potatoes that, y'all, I don't think there's any potatoes in there. I put my hands down in there and I felt nothing. I don't believe any potatoes survived on this particular plant, but I'm gonna give them one or excuse me, two more weeks, and then we're gonna call it, and then we're gonna use that pot for something else. Same thing with my green beans that I have in this container here. I have been able to harvest another two or three beans off of this plant. Um, I'm saying two or three beans, but a, a handful, maybe a couple of times now, a handful, but it's already yellow. I can't seem to get it fertilized well enough. The leaves are falling off. Everything is kind of dying and shrivel, shriveling up. So we will use that pot for something else as well. It's green stalk time. Y'all know I love my green stalks. I'm going to show you my indoor green stalks. And if you're interested in a green stalk, there will be a link in the description below that'll take you to the green stalk website where you can see anything and everything green stalk. But let me show you how my indoor green stalks are doing. On this green stalk in the front here, I have goose stalk growing. This is lettuce. Y'all, we have lettuce. I've actually transplanted new lettuce in as well. We got bib down here. It looks really good. I've harvested from some of these plants already and they're growing back. This is butter crunch and it's way, way, way too full. We're gonna to need to take care of that. My carrots have germinated. Look at that, look at the carrots, they're looking good. In the very bottom, I still have one bok choy going. It might be two. No, just one bok choy going in the bottom and the green beans. Now I have green beans in two or three pockets. They actually came back, they're doing really well. It looks like they want to start blooming. Now I gotta just make sure I don't step on them again. There's another pocket right there. And they look happy, very happy. Now, look at that green stalk right there. That's my pepper green stalk. And it looks amazing. Look at that red pepper right there. Giant Marconi is red. We'll be picking that in just a few days. Here's a Thunderbolt right here, it's looking happy. I have bell peppers as well. There's more Thunderbolt in the back. And then all the way up the top, y'all, those are my micro dwarf tomatoes that I've harvested like three times now. Let's take a good look at those. So I have some tomatoes that are coming in. Look at that. Look at those tomatoes. They look good, y'all. And there's plenty more back here. So lots of tomatoes still have tons of balloons. Look at this, this little tomato back here wants to bloom as well. Let me get it to the light where you can see it. Right there's more balloons. I believe every pocket has something in it now, except for that one down there at the bottom. And we might just transplant some of those peppers that we just up potted in the next few weeks. I also have my potatoes so we can get our slips. And there's a little bitty one right there coming on. 
and another little bitty one back there. You might not even be able to see it because it's burgundy in color. And these are doing really well. We're now on the back side of the grow tent and you can see there's peppers back here as well. They're looking good. I made sure I got light on the back side as well so we can make sure everything stays happy. And just outside the grow tent, because I ran out of room, I am growing more potatoes. I have potatoes in this container and this one here, and they should be popping their little heads out, the greenery out um, in the next few days or so, because it's been at least a week and a half now. So they are looking good and they are happy. Now let's head upstairs to where my hydroponic systems are growing so you can see how they're doing as well. Before I jump over to the hydroponic system, I want to make sure I show you the sweet potatoes that I have growing in water as well. Because we have both the sweet potatoes growing in soil and sweet potatoes growing in water. And we're gonna see which one gives us slips first. So right here are the sweet potatoes growing in water and they are already getting roots on them. You see those roots? So usually after you get those roots, you'll start getting the slips. So hopefully the slips will come very soon. And now it's time for us to talk about the hydroponic systems. So I have two lead pot systems up here and this is the original one and I'm growing tomatoes and peppers in this one and the one right beside it we are growing cucumbers so let's take a look in the first system here we initially grew lettuce we got a lot of lettuce the lettuce we harvested the, all of the lettuce and then the lettuce stopped growing because the tomatoes took off look at these tomatoes they are starting to turn red they're happy we will be harvesting tomatoes here as well as on the green stalk in the next week or so. On this one here, this is an orange hat. It was a little late to the party, but it has blooms now and is super, super happy. And right next to it here, I have a pepper plant. Now I topped this pepper plant again um, over the what, two days ago, I believe it was, and I'm starting to get a little bit of growth in the armpits of that pepper plant. So I'm going for a bushier plant versus a plant that's growing straight up. I also topped the tomato plant. I took the top, I don't know, six or eight inches out so that, it, I mean, like it was touching the top of the unit. I took the top six or eight inches out, so I'm hoping it will um, promote more side shoots in a bushier plant versus a tall plant. Now over here on my Let Pot Max unit, I have my two cucumbers and I have cucumbers that are self-pollinating. It doesn't need a pollinator and they are growing nice. I got blooms, blooms on the plant and way in the back there, y'all, there are cucumbers on this plant. There are cucumbers. There are small cucumbers, but they are there. Anywhere where you see those flowers, there is a cucumber attached to it. Now this plant started a little late. It was probably a week behind the other plant, but it's taking off now and it's happy as well. So that's what's going on in my indoor grow space. I hope you enjoyed the pepper update as well as the indoor grow space update. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. I'm here every two or three days. So until next time, and I hope there will be a next time that you come back to Kim's Cozy Corner. Bye.